Hiya. Hope you're doing all right. Looks like the weather's going down a little bit temperature wise. So hopefully you're you're not in a sweltering hell right now. It's much much more pleasant here in the northwest. It was actually cold last night. The weather is just freakish. It went from being like so hot you couldn't breathe to being kind of chilly. Yeah, it's craziness. But I hope you're staying cool. Because, yeah, it has not been fun this week at all. We're supposed to have thunder today, actually. It's supposed to get up into the mid-80s and cloudy. So that would be cool. At least there'll be some entertainment involved. Maybe the power will go out. Remember how fun that was when you were a kid? The power would go out. It'd be like the greatest thing that ever happened. So the video I'm doing today, I, I hadn't planned on doing it, but Depeche Mode released something this week, and it got me thinking about how record companies really annoy me <laughs> in these times, how they just re-release product and they put very little thought into it. and I'll get off the beaten path a little bit talking about that. But it made me think I wanted to talk about this because I, I do like this record. And I think it's, well, this is Sounds of the Universe, obviously. And I think generally this is the only, in my opinion, the only good Depeche Mode album that has been released since Ultra. And other than Ultra, it's the best non-Alan Wilder Depeche Mode album. I thought that things came together pretty nicely on this album. It's not perfect, but in comparison to everything they've done since Ultra, I would generally choose this as my favorite Depeche Mode album. And really, the only... Well, I shouldn't say the only good one. I do like Exciter. I think Exciter's pretty good. I think Mark Bell of LFO, which I've talked about, did a pretty good job. With Exciter, he took some mediocre songs and turned it into something that was really fun to listen to sonically. But this really, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll revise that since Exciter, really, this is the only good Depeche Mode album. I think everything they've put out since has just straight up not been good. Weak songs, D Depeche Mode on autopilot. But not here. I thought Martin Gord had a, a renewed vigor to his songwriting and his production and his... Not that he produced the album, but he, had, he, had, he wrote the songs. He was in on the production. But he was... I remember reading that he was on an uh, old vintage synthesizer kick when he made this album. And it seemed like he needed that as a kick in the ass to make this album interesting. And you hear it. It's, you know, it sounds like a very retro sounding Depeche Mode, but updated. This came out in 2009, so, and it hasn't aged. I mean, music that's come out in the digital age, you wouldn't be able to tell if it came out today or 20 years ago. That's the coolness or the curse of digital music. But this hasn't aged today. 2009, it was only 14 years ago. You can listen to this today and think it came out today. It's a good album. I was very pleased with this. I had almost given up on them because the album they put out before this, of Playing the Angel, was a steaming pile of garbage, if you ask me. Only one other album is worse, in my opinion. That's Memento Mori. And I've already ranted about that. You don't need to hear any more about that because I've done a video on that. But this is a really good album. I thought it was a return to form in some ways, but it sounds very different in the Depeche Mode catalog. It kind of stands on its own in terms of sound. And I think it's because of those retro synthesizers. They really push them to the front. And it's fun. This album's good. There's the track listing. In Chains is an awesome song. Hold a Feed is good. Wrong is good. Fragile Tension is good. Little Soul is okay. Uh, Peace is, was a single. That's one of their best songs, I think. Peace is an excellent song. Corrupt. Yeah, this is a good album. Some nice stuff going on here. Sounds of the Universe. 
them in 2009. I would recommend checking this out. If you're not a huge Depeche Mode fan, pick this up and, and check it out. It, uh, yeah, it has a little more drive. It has a little more kick to it than most, all of the modern, newer Depeche Mode albums. You definitely can hear a, a very genuine sense of not phoning it in. Like they've done with everything else they've done, I think. Since Exciter. And I would highly recommend picking up the remix box set they did right after this. Like a year or two. It was two years. Because it was... Uh, the name of it was 81 to 2011. Excellent remixes of stuff on here. I mean, it's, it's a remix package of their whole catalog. But this was their most recent album. And there is a fantastic Alan Wilder mix of In Chains. And I remember I, I wrote a review of that remix album. You can find it on my website, actually, if you're inclined to check my website. I did a review at the time. And I talked about how this band is desperately missing Alan Wilder. And it was. You, you listen to that I, Alan Wilder mix of In Chains from this album, and it's phenomenal. It's like the best remix on there. And it, it just reminds you that Wilder was a huge piece, much bigger piece than I think even Depeche Mode fans would admit. Not all Depeche Mode fans, but some. He had a much bigger piece to do with this band than most people give him credit for. That's why he left. That was the main reason Alan Wilder left the band. He didn't think he was being appreciated, and he probably wasn't. You, re you read some of the stories and biographies about this band and some interviews, and you realize Alan Wilder was a huge part of why this band sounded the way they did. It's hard to argue that fact. When he left, the band changed. The band never sounded the same. Alan Wilder. And if you listen to his recoil stuff, which, by the way, a few of you keep asking me to do recoil videos. I will. I'll do some. I've, I've, got, I've got some recoil stuff ready to go. They'll, they'll come out in the coming months at some point. But when you listen to the recoil stuff, you hear, you, you directly hear the correlation of Wilder being in this group. You can't deny it. It's there. So, check out that remix package. It would even be nicer if you took the time to go to my website and read what I wrote about the remix box set. That would be super cool of you. I'd be very thankful if you took the time to read that. Maybe I'll link to it. I always, I always provide links in my videos. I don't, think, I don't think a lot of you check those links. Some of you will ask me questions like, have you heard this? And then I'll have a link in the description. It's like, yeah, I've heard it. It's actually in the description. Check the, check the links, why don't you? You'll see some cool stuff. Oh, also, this reminds me, total side note. I've created some playlists on my YouTube channel. If you go to my YouTube homepage, and there'll be tabs of, like, videos, community, email, and then playlists. Check playlists. I haven't done a playlist for every video, but I've put up about a dozen at this point. Someone asked me to do an LFO playlist, and I did one. I'm trying to, I'm trying to do those more. But I haven't gotten any feedback once I have posted them. So if you're checking them out, let me know. It would be nice to know if you're even aware of those, number one. And number two, if you're checking them out. I am taking the time to do that. So let me know if you're, if you're experiencing the playlist in my tab section on my homepage. Because if, if you don't care, I'll just stop doing it. But a few of you have asked. So I thought I'd, I thought I'd do that. But anyway. Sounds of the Universe, a good album. Now, the reason I'm talking about this is because they released the, the singles box set for this last week. For every album up to this point, they have released a box set for all of the singles from each album, which is a really great idea. I always wish that bands would do that. I wish other bands would do that. I think it's a brilliant idea. And I've picked up every one of them, even though I already have all the singles. I'm enough of a Depeche Mode freak that I've picked every one of them up. And I've thought about doing some videos on, like, 
I have a plan to do the Violator box set because that's just my favorite Depeche Mode album and I think their best singles are there and their best remixes and their best B-sides. Violator's a, a fascinating album. We all love that album. And I was thinking about doing a video on Violator. What do you think about that? And I was going to break open the box set because it's a really cool box set. They did an excellent job and these presses on the singles box sets have been really nice. They've done one for every album from Speak and Spell up to this point, and they're doing them in sequential order as they came out. Another really good idea. So I've gotten every single one of them except this one. The, it came out last week. I saw it come out, and I had it in my cart, and I was ready to pull the trigger, and then I noticed it was $200, and I was like, wow. And there's seven records in this box set. Seven. Okay, you get, and they're not albums, they're seven 12 inches filled with remixes of the same song, $200 for this. Okay, now the, the price has probably come down already. I can't imagine buyers would accept this. So I'm sure the price has probably come down, but still, $200 for seven 12 inches of remixes is a fucking disgrace. So that alone pissed me off. I was like, no. I'm not doing that. Then I looked at the track listing. I started digging around, and then I got even more pissed off. They just flat out leave out songs, remixes, B-sides. The first thing I noticed is the box set completely ignored the fact that Thomas Fellman did a couple of remixes of Little Soul. Now, they were digital only. At the time you bought this, if you bought it on iTunes, there was like a big deluxe digital package. And it had bonus remixes, and it had some B-sides. If you bought the physical box set of this, it still had the B-sides and a couple of remixes. There's a B-side in particular called Ghost. That's a great song. It should have been on the album. It's a very, very cool song. Did they include it on the box set? No. Did they include any of the Fellman mix? Fellman did three remixes of Little Soul. Did they include even one of them on the box set? No. And there are multiple, there's, there's another remix by Minilog. A really excellent remix by Minilog. He did In Chains, I think. Was it on the box set? No. Seriously? Rhino, Sony, the guys who own Depeche Mode's catalog, did you not notice this? Now, a lot of these singles didn't get released on vinyl at the time, so it's, there's a big incentive for Depeche Mode fans to get this new box set. But then Sony fucks it up by not putting all the songs on there. Number one, if you're going to charge $200, you need to have 10 records in there, not seven. You had more than enough room to create at least one more 12-inch with a couple of the Fellman mixes and the Minilog remix. But, and Ghost. Where's Ghost? A very lazy, sloppy box set. Record executives not thinking about things. They're just, they're just shitting out product for us to buy. They know that a new Depeche Mode thing on the shelves or on the internet, Depeche Mode fans are just going to push the buy button and buy whatever, whatever's coming out. I encourage all Depeche Mode fans to not buy that box set. You're getting ripped off. Do not buy it. These record companies need to step up their fucking game, man. If you look at the Violator box set, they did a really thoughtful job on that one. They included a bonus 12-inch with like a promo-only Orb remix that was only on a promo at the time. There's an extra Beloved mix that you could only find on vinyl on a limited edition. They did a really thoughtful job on that. And then they turn around with this album and just squeeze out a bunch of remixes they just had laying in front of them. They didn't put any thought into anything. And I understand, like, maybe those digital remixes were to be digital exclusives, whatever. But they're still in your masters. You still have those tracks. There's no reason you can't put them out on wax. Are you trying, trying to tell me that you're trying to honor someone who bought an exclusive package 14 years ago in digital form? Nobody cares now. I bought the digital, exclusive digital version and got those Fellman remixes, and I want them on wax. 
I, I'm just putting that out as an argument. Maybe that was their thinking. Well, this was a digital-only package. Nobody cares now. It was over 14 years ago that happened. I would much rather have everything that I bought on that digital package that was exclusively digital. I'd rather have it on vinyl. And so would a lot of people. No one's going to remember that. <laughs> Other than me, of course. But I'm sure some people remember. But I, I find it hard to believe that someone's going to be like, hey, man, over 14 years ago, I bought this digital exclusive. Why are you now putting out on wax in 2023? Nobody would care. So that's really the gist of what my video is about today. Don't buy that box set. Buy this. This is a good album. All the tracks are here represented on wax. But that box set is a lazy piece of shit. You know, this has not been a good year for Depeche Mode, in my opinion. This has maybe arguably been their worst ever year. They put out that steaming pile of dung, Memento Mori, and I'll stand by that opinion until the day I die. And then they put out this Sounds of the Universe box set that just omits remixes and B-sides. How could you forget this? Do we really want seven mixes of Fragile Tension and seven mixes of Wrong? and Put Ghost on there, at the very least. Thomas Fellman remixed Little Soul. That was a song that didn't get heavily remixed. At least put one remix on the box set. That's what I have to say today. I was, I was going through... I haven't bought any new stuff lately, actually. It's been, it's been slow. I, have any of you bought any new records lately? I haven't bought any. There just hasn't been anything I'm, I've been interested in. And with Apple Music around, it's hard to get on board with buying vinyl lately. It, it, everything's on Apple Music now. It's become part of my routine, actually. I've had this routine every morning where I check the places I check for new records. But what's part of my new routine now is if I see a record I want, I go to Apple Music, and if it's there, I don't generally buy it. The sound quality on Apple Music is phenomenal. So it's, it's things like this that Sony puts out this subpar product, and they're not putting any kind of consideration of their fans into their releases that make me want to buy less vinyl. They need to get on top of these kinds of things because they're being lazy. They're being very lazy. And I thought it was worth mentioning. Because they're just discrediting our intelligence as, as Depeche Mode fans. We notice these things. I can't be the only one out there that looked at this new Sounds of the Universe box set and, and was like, where are the Fellman mixes? Where's Ghost? Where's the Minilog remix? They're not there. So... They need to do a much better job because they're just condescending us at this point. And $200 for seven 12 inches. They're not albums. They're 12 inches filled with the same remix of the same song. You get the vocal mix and then the dub mix and then the edit mix. I mean, come on. $200? People are strapped for money right now as it is. You're going you're gonna to rape us for $200 for a bunch of remixes? Stop it. Okay, that's what I had to say today. Until next time, bye.